Hey guys, my name is Jared and I'm here with James. And my name is James and I'm here with Jared. And today we are going to be talking about the Bible. Is uh, it still trustworthy? I love the Bible. What a great topic. Yeah. Yeah, is it still trustworthy? Of course it's still trustworthy. But why is it still trustworthy? Why yeah. was it trustworthy to begin with? Yeah. Where you at? I don't know. It's an old book, bro. <laughs> it's so old. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so old. <laughs> we talk about the New Testament, which is like the Gospels and Jesus and Paul and all these things. That was written what, 2,000 years ago? Yeah, yeah. And the Old Testament, more than that. Well, so much more. Yeah. So Plus, it, yeah, it's, it's crazy when you look at it. But uh, but the Bible's come under a lot of, like, scrutiny. Yeah. I mean, not lately. Let's just be real about this. Always. Forever. Yeah. It's been under a lot of scrutiny. Um, Because it's a historical document. And so figuring out, like, is the history of this real and all that stuff. So you yeah. go back to, like, early and original manuscripts, which I, I think this topic is fascinating i could geek out about this <laughs> yeah, um yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 looking into it when you look at like greek manuscripts of mm -hmm. scripture th there are so many greek manuscripts of the new testament um so much so that if you took all the different like greek manuscripts that we have and you stack them on top of each other um you'd get a stack of paper about a mile high whoa it's this massive massive book and manuscripts and everything which it's which a lot is of paper unlike any other historical document like no okay. other his no other document in all of history has as many original manuscripts as scripture like even if you were to look at the works of i think homer um or or like plato plato yes. yeah if you were to work look at the works of plato um there's 20 original manuscripts which makes about a four foot stack so it's shorter than me yeah yeah. It's not a very impressive stack of paper. And then if you were to add the Old Testament into that, you're talking about a stack of paper that reaches like to the moon, I think is what the current thing is. So that's a lot of paper. It's and so much. Well, papyrus and all that. Good so it's stuff. thicky paper. Yeah. It's super thick paper. Yeah. The Bible also did something really interesting that no other historical document did is papyrus was typically just written on one side yeah they're like oh man this is kind of a waste let's write on both sides because it's a mile high oh, but dude. it's written on both sides they're, re they're rebels they're dude rebels. so it's it's crazy how much um information that there is but the thing that always like interests me about this and i've heard this argument a few times is there's so many like textual variants in the new testament okay textual variants that's a big word <laughs> what does that mean dude? Right. <laughs> so a textual variant is um when you look at uh, a couple different original manuscripts the words okay. are different so like the original writings and yeah. the words are different on yeah. different ones so it's like um and then jesus said blah 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 yes um but if you have a manuscript that just says then jesus said and you leave out the and that's a textual variant oh if if you have different. um then uh like the difference between a and and uh, just some of these like little tiny things that change language and how it's written and how it's said. Okay. It's, it's technically a textual variant. Okay. Um, I think in our New Testament, there are three textual variants that would actually change the meaning of the sentence, which is okay. like, um, there's some debate over Gehenna and if people are thrown into Gehenna or cast out into Gehenna or what that even means or are they thrown into Gehenna or are they thrown into hell? Because those are also two different kind of concepts that are happening there. Okay. As well. So, but there's only three in all of our New Testament that would actually change the meaning. So there's there's a ton of these different variants that you're talking yes. about, but there's only three that would actually change the meaning of the sentence? Yes. And none of it is like a big doctrine. It's, okay. It's oh, it's almost like a oh well. Do people like get cast in Gehenna or do they get cast into hell? And what's the difference there? Yeah, I don't um, even know what Gehenna is. Oh, you want to go there? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, you yeah. <laughs> Gehenna was this place outside of uh, Jerusalem where people would take trash and but it actually Gehenna gets its roots um, and it was this place that was. Um, It was a dump, but before that, it was a ritual site for other religions. And, and so, like, the forerunning popular commentary says that it was a, a trash heap. There's actually, I recently learned, no phys physical evidence of it being a dump site, okay. of it being trash. It really became uh, and was this huge, like, sacrificial site for false gods. Um, it also huh. kind of turned into this place where bodies were buried and burned um and hmm. so in in the new testament and in someone living in jerusalem they would know gehenna as this like 
spiritually evil place um, with like burning bodies, fire, gross. No one wants to go there. So it's kind um, of this like picture of hell. So it's this miniature picture of hell. Yeah, okay. Is, is what it is. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that comes from that, but it's this little picture. But mm. but how you understand that can maybe change how you view hell. Mm. But yeah. ultimately, like it's it, it's not like Jesus saves. It's not yeah. that level of doctrine. Um, yeah. And so these 400 textual variants really add up to being not anything that big. Mm. Um, e- even if you look at Shakespeare, Shakespeare's got an equal amount of textual variants in it, but we believe the words of Shakespeare even though we don't have any original manuscripts of Shakespeare, all we have from Shakespeare's writing is printed press material from okay. Shakespeare. Um, so I don't know. We, we can trust the Bible because of that. We can trust the New Testament because of that. And in Old Testament, there's a whole lot of uh, other stuff to it. Uh, we can touch the, trust the New Testament and the scripture to be the scripture because we have original manuscripts um, dating 60 years to the life of Jesus. So like Jesus lived, um, and then 60 years later, we have the first manuscript of Jesus' life. 60 years still feels like a long time. Why is that a big deal? 60 years is, it does feel like a long time because yeah. I'm not 60. No, you're not. Yeah. So you plus me, it's not 60. That, oh, that's true. Um, <laughs> uh, because in other historical documents, we're, we're not talking about um, decades. We're talking about hundreds of years. Really? Uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know. Looking into it, it's, it's fascinating. So Alexander the Great, who we all know Alexander the Great, we all have read about what he's done. He's done some crazy things. He conquered, you know, the known world and made Rome huge. Um, yeah. The closest manuscript we have of Alexander's life. Yeah. Uh, so like recounting what he did to his life is a thousand years from his life. So it was like written a thousand years after he was alive? Yeah. Here's how I picture it. Okay. Let's pretend. Let's not actually do this. Let's just pretend that I punched you in the face right now. Again? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone, we weren't on camera, but someone was watching and they wrote down, oh my gosh, I was in this place and this dude punched this other dude. His name was Jared and he took it like a man. Yeah. yeah only cried cool. a little bit. They'll embellish the story for <laughs> you. Um, and then uh, that person wrote it down and then someone read about this story and they thought yeah. it was cool and they wrote it down and they wrote it down and they wrote it down. And then long after we're dead, a thousand years later, someone reads this story of like, hey, look it, there was this dude James and he punched this dude Jared and Jared took it like a man. Or it's changed significantly. Maybe they say you crumbled like a glass jaw. Mm. Let's go with that. Um, is that the actual truth? And they would have no way of knowing because they're a thousand years removed from the original actual event. Um, n- not so with the yeah. New Testament. We're, we're 60 years removed. There's still eyewitnesses around when uh, we have original manuscripts. In fact, 150 years from the date of uh, Christ, we have the entire Gospels as manuscripts of like, mm. it's just, it just goes to show that the scriptures are trustworthy, um, n- not simply because they say they're trustworthy, although that's a big deal, Uh, but because the historical evidence points to the fact that they are the most documented, most manuscript, most truth-telling, rigorous historical document we have in existence. Um, Mm. And so it's fascinating when we read what we're reading, that we know we're reading about like the life and ministry of Christ and what he did in the early church. So it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, and we can trust that it's true. I really like that we can trust that it's true. Hmm. It, it is this assurance of knowing, like, I'm not speculating in this. This is what Jesus said. This is what happened in the church. It gives me confidence. It also, like, unites me with the church of the past and knowing, um, I mean, we've got different, we do church very, very different from the early church and from, hmm. like, the Acts. Um, but also, like, we're following the same God, and that God hasn't changed. So yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Dude, so you answered some of the questions of like, is the Bible still trustworthy? But there's probably so much more that goes into, is the Bible still trustworthy that we can't cover in 10 minutes of a conversation? No way. We yeah. like scratch the iceberg, We're like tip of the iceberg. Um, is there other resources that we could look at to find more information on the trustworthiness of the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't have them. So we could probably put them in the We'll like, find the them and put them in the show notes. Yeah, the show um, notes. Yeah. There's a couple great. I mean, there are people who dedicate their lives to textual criticism and understanding the scripture and the scriptures as a historical document. Uh, we went to a conference recently mm-hmm. in which this guy was like debating not like the NIV versus the ESV, but like one version of manuscript versus another version of manuscript and being like, look, there's a textual variant here and the date is like a hundred years apart from each other. So yeah, I mean, that like went super over my head. 
I could <laughs> barely keep up, but but just barely. Um, and, and so there's a ton of incredible trustworthy resources mm. of people who love the Lord and who want to see us um, with the most accurate version of the Bible that we could possibly do, which they're doing a killer job of making that happen. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's so much more we could talk about, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Bible next week, but we're going to wrap up here, and we're going to have some resources for you guys in, in the, the show notes. So thanks for joining us. This has been Connection and Conviction. We'll see you guys next week. See you.